Fire Girl, Chapter 9 It was hot outside when I trotted across the yard in gym class and heard Jeff say, How did she get that way? Yeah, how, said Rich, who was standing with him. The look on his face showed that he'd been wondering things aloud, too. So what burned her, Jeff said to us. That's what I want to know. Nobody's talking about it. How it happened, that's the point. The point? Somebody must know, said Rich, his eyes darting around and his head nodding quickly as if no one could possibly disagree with that. Mrs. Tracy knows for sure. Jeff snorted. Why don't you ask her, he said. He gave Rich a hard push towards the school. Then go do a report on it. I'm not going to ask her. Why not? You love Miss Tracy. You want to kiss her. I do not. I was moving from one foot to the other as I listened to them talking. It surprised me that with every, everything going on during Jessica's first week at St. Catherine's, I hadn't even thought of that part of the situation. It suddenly seemed really odd to me that I never even asked myself how. I mean, of course, right? How did she get burned? How did it happen? How, did, how could she be like that? It was probably in her house, Rich said. She was playing with matches and the curtains caught fire or something. That's what I think. When I was three, I supposedly, supposedly lit a tablecloth on fire. It was Thanksgiving and I was under the table. She was burned about two years ago, maybe two and a half, said Jeff, as if he was certain. From what my mother says, that's what you look like. She should have died. That's about as bad as you can get and still live. You talked to your mother about her, I asked. Plus, she's big, he went on, so she's probably a couple years older than us. She must have been in the hospital for a long time after she got burned and, la and lost at least a year of school, maybe more. You know a lot, said Rich, almost in awe. Now I couldn't get it out of my mind. Jessica's face came to me again, and I must have begun to wince or something because Rich laughed and pointed at me. I turned away from him. But I did begin to wonder why Mrs. Tracy hadn't said something like, don't play with matches, or don't stick things in electrical sockets, or don't fool around in the kitchen, using Jessica as sort of a warning of what could happen. Maybe it was just an accident, I said. Jeff made a noise under his breath. <laughs> yeah, maybe, or maybe it was something else. That's what I think, said Rich, as if Jeff had actually just said what as if what Jeff had just said really meant anything plus I wonder if anybody else was in the fire and then died Jeff nodded slowly sure probably that bad oh yeah some girls Courtney and Darlene and someone else were beginning to shoot hoops across the yard and the coach Mrs. Brower turned toward us, her whistle between her teeth. The necklace of the whistle strap loops behind her neck. She's going to call us now, I said. Joey said he saw her father, but he's mostly normal, not all burned up like she is, Rich whispered. I let my face go red and I turned to Jeff. Joey didn't see her father, I saw him. And of course he's normal. Maybe her mother then, said Jeff. For the second time, I felt as if I wanted to shove this conversation aside somehow. Wreck it. It seemed so dumb to stand around wondering about how somebody got the way she was. It happened. So, okay, why talk about it? I wanted to walk away from them, but I didn't. I wondered why I didn't. But I wasn't sure. I was hoping Mrs. Brower would finally call us to do something, but she was still across the yard talking to some of the girls and moving her arms. Or a dog, said Rich, his eyes large. Maybe her dog died. Pets stay with you in a fire, I heard. Anyway, I said, interrupting loudly, not wanting to talk about pets and fires anymore. Jeff, how about when, how about when we go driving around next Saturday, you know? Huh? He turned to me, narrowing his eyes, as if he wasn't getting it. You say the strangest things. What are you talking about? I was thinking that, uh, I didn't know why I said what I said next.
but it just came out. Maybe we can drive by Courtney's house. We can go by her house and honk the horn. I couldn't believe what I was saying. My pulse was racing hard. My voice was quivering. My chest thumped. What's this? Why this? Courtney? I'm saying her name? Here? I'm giving up my secret? Why? For her? For Jessica Feeney? So we wouldn't talk about her anymore? Jeff looked at me. His face was blank. I mean, your uncle's still coming over next weekend, right? What are you talking about, said Rich, looking back and forth between us. What uncle? Jeff nodded. He's coming. And he'll have the you-know-what. The you-know-what, asked Rich. You know, I said, not taking my eyes off Jeff. Finally, he grinned back. Yeah. Yeah. Courtney's house. He, was, he said, glancing at Rich, who was still in the dark. Yeah, cool. But for some reason, that wasn't enough to push it away. Rich already seemed bored with our talk. When he looked once more back at the school, he had a smirky little smile on his face. It seemed as if he was remembering some other thing that he had heard about Jessica, and it wasn't going to be nice. I'm going to nominate Courtney, too. I blurted out, spilling everything right there on the gym, in the gym yard. Same idiot in my brain kept saying, Go on, tell them everything. Tell them all about it, you jerk. I'm going to do it first, I said, before anybody else has a chance. The coach was finally coming toward us now. I heard one of her knees snap, snapping loudly as she walked. Rich still had that face on. He was, he was going to say something. His mouth opened. And you know what else? I had to finish it. It was, a, it was complete idiocy. I really like her, I said quickly. I like Courtney. She'd make a cool president. Rich's face grew suddenly huge. What? You love her? His eyes went wide. His mouth dropped open exaggeratedly. Tom loves Courtney. Ooh, Jeff, he loves Courtney. Ooh. She's going to win, Jeff said quietly as Mrs. Bauer finally blew her whistle. The class started, and we were pulled apart to different sides of the yard. Everything was a blur during the rest of gym class. I couldn't believe that I had just told them everything. I, I had told them I liked Courtney. Later, just before lunch, when it was time for social studies, Mrs. Tracy clasped her hands together and looked around to get everyone's attention. Another announcement, someone whispered from the back of the room. Not another new person. That was a pretty stupid thing to say. Before we start social studies, Mrs. Tracy said, Sister Margaret Christopher has suggested that the classes join in a special prayer for all the candidates in the real election this year. A prayer that they they make the right decisions and will help us and, and guide us and lead us to safe and prosperous lives in our state and our country. All the grades are doing it. So hands, everyone. Hold hands? No way, said Eric Lobianco, repeating what he had said every prayer time. It's a short prayer, Mrs. Trace, he said, looking at Eric, and we will all participate. The more of us who say the prayer, the better the chances it will be heard. Kayla made a show of wiping her small hands and held them out, one to Rich and the other to me. I glanced to the back corner to see Courtney holding Dave Tessman's hand. I wondered for an instant if Dave felt anything for Courtney or knew how lucky he was. His other hand held his twin sister Karen's hand, Dave and Karen Tessman. As everyone reached out, Something rippled across the room, as if they all suddenly thought of the same thing at the same time. Jessica Feeney was in class now. Coming in late and leaving early most days, she had all mo always missed the morning and afternoon prayer rings. But now she was here. This was the first time her hands burned. Her burned hands would be part of the prayer ring. She stood up and extended her hand to me. I felt as if everyone's eyes were on me. I must have dropped a gallon of sweat into my shirt. 
I felt my arms and my sides and waist dripping wet, but with that curled thing held out in the air toward me, I could not take it. I had to hold it. My hand reached out to hers and took it. I held it lightly, and I think she helped by not squeezing. My hand must have been sweaty. Her palm felt pretty normal. The skin felt cool. It's not the burned side, I told myself. Of course. She must have had her ha kept her hands all fisted up when she was in the fire, banging whatever it was to get out of wherever she was when the fire was all around her. When she turned to Jeff, he kept his eyes down and his arms down. She extended her hand, crooked and red, and bent open, but he made no move. Everyone stood there, completely silent and waiting. Jeff, said Mrs. Tracy, glancing over at him with a frown and a smile, a frown and eyes that were stern and dark. Her head was half, bo half bowed to begin the prayer. Jeff did not meet her look. He set his feet firmly on the floor, legs apart as if he expected a huge wave or something to wash over him. He pushed up his he pushed his balled up fists into his pockets and didn't hold anyone's hand. He looked ready to leave the classroom any second. It's okay, said Jessica, letting her hand drop. Mrs. Tracy closed her, her eyes and said the prayer.